The world is mostly water. We haven't even come close to exploring all of the world's oceans yet, and there could be hundreds of species down there in the dark and the wet waiting to be discovered. There are also a lot of human artifacts beneath the water surface, some of which were placed there deliberately, and some of which arrived quite by accident. Join us for this detailed look into some of the most incredible underwater finds in the world. Spotting a crashed plane on Google Maps would be an impressive achievement for any civilian. But when a British man did exactly that when he was looking at a lake in Minneapolis in 2016, the truth turned out to be even stranger than he first imagined. He hadn't just spotted a plane, he'd found a ghost plane. When he produced evidence of what clearly seemed to be a twin-engined aircraft in the lake, it prompted a huge investigation. There was no official record of a plane crash or a missing aircraft in the area, so experts had no idea what they might find when they turned up. They were baffled when they found nothing at all. There was no plane at the location. Google later explained that a plane must have been passing directly over the area at the exact moment the photo was taken, leaving a ghostly outline of a sunken aircraft. That confirmation hasn't stopped conspiracy theorists speculating that it could be a famous missing Malaysian airliner. And the real story is being covered up. The sunken plane in Minneapolis may not have been real, but this enormous Japanese submarine discovered off the coast of Hawaii in 2013 is no fabrication. Known as a Sentoku-class submarine, this was the largest submarine vessel belonging to any of the nations who were active during the Second World War. It was 400 feet long and contained a hangar so large that it would have had space for three full-sized bomber planes. The Americans captured it from the Japanese and towed it back to Hawaii for further inspection. But after learning its secrets, they were so protective of this technological marvel that they sunk it on purpose to hide the technology from the Soviet Union. Officially classed as missing at the end of the war, the ship was actually hiding 2,300 feet below the sea. A few feet away from the wrecked body of the boat is its bell, which was torn away from the hull by the force of the explosion that condemned it to its eternal rest. Once upon a time, Port Royal in Jamaica was known as the wickedest city in the world. During the late 17th century, it was a lawless place and a focus of pirate activity and drunken debauchery. Allegedly, as many as one in four of all the buildings there was either a bar or a brothel, and some of them were both. Incredibly strong rum was brewed here, and stolen money was accepted in the bars and hostelries with no questions asked. When a huge earthquake struck the area and sank half of the city in 1692, many people of the time viewed it as a punishment from God. 33 acres of the land, which had been built on sand, was sucked below the waves. Despite being below 40 feet of water, many of the old buildings and artifacts are still so well preserved that some experts compare it to Pompeii in terms of historical significance. Many items from below have washed up on the shore over the years, including a 1686 pocket watch stopped at 1143, the exact time the earthquake struck on June 7th during that fateful year. When a sonar scan revealed an oddly shaped object 400 feet long sitting at the bottom of the Baltic Sea in 2012, nobody could agree what it was likely to be. Fans of the Star Wars movies noted its similarity to the Millennium Falcon spaceship from the films. Other people thought it looked like a gigantic carving of an elephant. There was one thing that everyone agreed on. It had the look of something that had been made by human hands. The cylinder-shaped body of the object looked almost metallic, which suggested intelligent design. But how could such an object exist 300 feet below the waves? The survey team who found the anomaly was searching for a World War I-era shipwreck, but they didn't feel that whatever they'd found came from that time. Some scientists have warned against all the speculation, saying that it's unlikely to be anything more exciting than a strangely shaped glacial deposit. But until someone can take a submarine with cameras down to that depth, we'll never know for sure. Americans can go to Mount Rushmore if they want to see enormous sculptures of their most famous leaders carved into rock. If Russians want to do the same, they need to head to Crimea and look underwater. There, they'll find the Cape Tarkinkut Underwater Museum, 
also known as the Avenue of Leaders. The first statues were placed below the waves back in 1992 and represent busts and heads of various communist-era leaders of the USSR. The figures are neatly lined up on racks and shelves and would make for a great display anywhere on the land, but putting them on the seabed seems to be a bigger draw for the tourist divers who come to see them. So far, more than 50 famous faces have been committed to the water, but more are added to that collection all the time. Cape Tarkincut is an area of outstanding natural beauty with clean beaches and clear blue waters. In fact, on a good day, the sea is so clear that you can see through all 30 feet of the water above the statues and admire them from the surface. Sea levels and shorelines change over time. There are areas of the world that are now land but were once below the waves, and there are parts of the sea that were once land. Because of that, we sometimes find ancient human-made wonders sitting deep underwater, such as this giant Mediterranean monolith. The 10,000-year-old rock was discovered 37 miles away from what's now Sicily and has been broken into three chunks. The holes in those chunks prove that the rocks were shaped by humans, though, and are therefore a relic of the people who once lived in the Mediterranean basin before their islands slipped underwater. The most likely explanation of the monolith's purpose is that it was likely once positioned on the shoreline, and so it would have served as both a warning and a welcome to passing sailors, giving them a place to anchor their ships, but also alerting them that the water was about to become shallow. In that way, it would have served the same purpose as a lighthouse. If you want to go and see some elephants, you have a few options. You could go to a local zoo and see some of the great beasts in captivity. You could also head out on safari and see them in their natural environment. Now Thailand offers you another option. You can see them underwater. Don't worry, they haven't started drowning elephants for your entertainment. These are enormous concrete elephant sculptures installed in Siam Bay in 2006 for the amusement and entertainment of the divers who visit the region. The elephants are actually just part of the site. There's a whole underwater temple down there, including an impressively ornate gate to swim through, and a gigantic sentry deity known as Yak. Competition among dive sites in Phuket is fierce, and so each company that owns a diving location is always trying to get one over on the competition. We imagine that nobody else offers an underwater elephant tour, so the Siam site is probably doing fine. Earlier this year, a story went viral on social media about a statue of the Virgin Mary that had been discovered at the bottom of the Indian Ocean. The story claimed that nobody knew how the statue had got there, and that despite being located at the murky depths, it was miraculously free of barnacles. That isn't completely true. But the story behind it is still an interesting one. The statue was erected in 2010 by a team of environmentalists who were trying to end the practice of dynamite fishing in the area. They were concerned that the practice of using dynamite in fishing was killing an excessive amount of marine life and also damaging the coral. Their theory was that the people who lived in the Bohol area of the Philippines would hesitate to damage a religious idol because of their strong Catholic faith and so they wouldn't risk using dynamite in case it resulted in blowing up the statue. They were right. Nine years later, the statue is unharmed and the marine life has recovered. Most superstitious people will tell you that disturbing a Native American burial ground is a bad idea because it will result in hauntings and curses. If that's true, we wonder what fate awaits the person who found this one off the coast of Florida. They had to go to great lengths to disturb it. It was underwater, and it had been hidden for more than 7,000 years. The discovery was made when an amateur diver alerted authorities to possible human remains after she spotted bones during a dive in 2016. Officials investigated, fearing a possible recent homicide, but instead were amazed to discover an incredibly well-preserved Native American gravesite. The tiny site covers only three quarters of an acre, which is possibly how it's evaded detection for so long. At the time that bodies were laid to rest here, it would have been on the shoreline of Venice, and any water at the location would have been little more than a freshwater pond. 
When divers found gold objects at the bottom of Lake Titicaca in April 2019, they'd located more than just a treasure trove of precious metal. They'd found evidence of an ancient religion that might shed some light on how and why the Tiwanaku state became so dominant in ancient times. As well as the gold, they also discovered shells and animal bones that showed the telltale signs of ritualistic slaughter. The finds date back 1,200 years, to a time when the Island of the Sun was a focal point for Tiwanaku religious ceremonies. We know the people of Tiwanaku were religious to the point of being fanatics, but we know almost nothing about what the religion involved or what they believed in. We also don't know much about how they prospered from exporting trade and religion when everyone around them seemed to deal in war. Finds like these, including metal tablets showing a mysterious cat llama hybrid creature and gold medals featuring the sun god, may help us to shine a little more light on the intricacies of their society. Until 2017, this next find was thought to be nothing more than an urban legend. Chinese folklore speaks of a man named Yellow Tiger, who led a peasant uprising and looted many villages for their valuables during the Ming Dynasty, only to see his ships sink along with all of their stolen treasures as he tried to flee China. Now it appears there may be an element of truth to the legends. An incredible 10,000 Ming Dynasty artifacts have been found at the bottom of the Minjiang River, south of Shangdu in Sichuan and nobody seems to know of any way they could have come to be there unless the Yellow Tiger legend is true. It's said that the rebels' purge of the villages during the 1640s was so brutal that one in every three people was left dead, and there's some support for the idea of military conquest among the finds. For every gold coin or piece of jewelry found in the river, there have also been spears, swords, and knives. People have been searching for the wreck of the San Jose ever since the Spanish galleon sank over 300 years ago, and with good reason. If the records and stories of the era are to be believed, it went down with a collection of treasure worth more than $17 billion on board. Now the wreck has finally been found by a robotic submarine, and it looks like it's going to cause an international incident. The robot located cannons made of bronze and bearing dolphin engravings at the bottom of the Caribbean Sea, and the San Jose is known to have had those armaments on board at the time of her sinking. The team responsible for the find say that the whole shipwreck and its heavy load of emeralds, silver, and gold has now also been located, but they're keeping the precise location a closely guarded secret. We do, however, know that it's somewhere off the coast of Colombia, and that's where the dispute lies. Spain wants its treasure back. Colombia says it's theirs because it's within their waters. With $17 billion on the line, neither side is willing to back down. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.